Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you sound excited, Marcos. How are you? I'm fine. Excellent. So uh, I have a, I have a dream because uh, today uh, tier yes. Uh, no me recuerdo cómo se dice tercera dosis. Third dose. So you got your third vaccine. Yes. Oh, okay. What? Which one? Pfizer, Moderna. Pfizer. No. Oh, okay. Okay. I got it. I got it like a, like two weeks ago. Yeah, I got it two weeks ago. I didn't oh. get. I didn't get any symptoms. Pfizer or Moderna. Pfizer. Oh. Didn't get any symptoms. Do you have symptoms? Uh, only, only, only dreams. Only? Uh, sueño. Solo sueño. Oh, you're sleepy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah, sleepy. I was really, really, really sleepy, and also. I had a little bit of pain in my arm, but little, just like, it wasn't really bad pain, just a little pain, like, like when you get a, a, a burst, you know what is a burst? It's like a morete, so when you get like a burst, so I felt like that, but no, not nothing else. Okay, guys, thank you very much for being here in the class. Thank you very much for coming to the class because I was like, hey, I don't have students today in my class. I don't know what is happening because it was 8.03 already and nobody was here. So I was wondering, did I connect in a, on a Thursday or a Friday? I don't know. <clears throat> I was worried. So, but thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to the class. Remember that we only have, besides this one, um, three more classes. So basically four classes and then we're over. So let's try not to leave by the end. And I don't know if you're thinking to leave. So I don't know if you want to continue with these modules. Are you going? Are you going to continue studying English next month? Yes. Okay, Henry, Sirhan. Yes. Marielos too. Yes. Okay, Marcos too. Okay, guys, I'm asking you this because sometimes it it always happens when we're getting to the end of um, a course. Basically, you are you are there. When we're getting to the end of a course, many students start saying like, yeah, I have some other things to do. I don't think I will be in the classes. Um, and they stop before they get to advance. They stopped. And it's really sad because if you stopped when you're about to be advanced, then when you come back, your level, it's going to be different. So maybe you were pre-advanced. Now you're going to be intermediate again because we forget if we don't practice we forget so what i'm trying to say right now is please don't live in this moment because this is one of the most important moments when learning english you're about to be advanced and once you're advanced it's a matter of some modules and then you're gonna be over right doesn't mean that you know English already and then you don't have to practice English anymore. You have to do it because you need to practice English a lot. But don't leave right now. I'm just trying to say that, please, this is, we are very close to the end, very, very close to the end. So don't leave and try to, I'm just trying to make this group work. So if you don't leave, you give your classmates an opportunity to continue. The problem is when we have short groups, meaning that we have only five students that want to continue. So only five who wants to continue. So it's a problem for the other ones because then we won't have enough um, <clears throat> students to continue with the module. So please try to stay and try to um, 
be a team, like a team group, so we can all get to the end of the course, right? And you all are going to be, this year, you're all going to be advanced. This year, we're not gonna wait for another year. This year, okay? So please try to stay, okay? Perfect. So welcome again. And now let's write the date in the chat. Please send me the date. What day is today? You already know days of the week and months of the year, capital letter at the beginning, please. I don't know guys if it, it's hot where you live, but here where I live, it's really hot in this moment. It's hot here, teacher. Too. It's hot? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't... Maybe it will be start to rain here. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling because in the room... like like yesterday, yesterday here, it rained a lot. Where do you live, Julio? Lo Urdes, Colón. Oh, okay. La okay. okay. Because Marcos lives in La Union and he said that yesterday was raining also in La Union. I think yesterday the rain in no country. No, it didn't. Because here in no? Sultan it didn't. Oh. No, it didn't. Okay. But it was really hot and today it's really hot. Maybe okay. today? Yeah, maybe today. I hope so. Okay, perfect. I think we're good with the date. I think that's a topic that you are getting really good. Remember, just with the pronunciation is 16th. Remember that, 16th, 16th. So um, I'm gonna share my screen in this moment so you can help me with that. Um, Gabby, will you please read the date? Uh, today is Wednesday, March uh, 16th, 2022. Perfect. Good job. Thank you very much, Gabby. Now let's see. Henry, will you please read the topic? Me? Yeah. Um, Henry, Henry, okay. Henry. Um, Henry. Um, I'm good at history. I'm good at history. Okay, thank you very much, Henry. I'm good at history. Guys, do you know that history and story, do you know the difference between those two words, history and story? You, don't, you, you know the differences? Yes. Okay, can you tell me? History is a lost time. Uh, history is is present. Yeah, there are many differences. The first one is that history is something that happened in the history, like Marcos was saying a long time, right? So for example, the wars, the war, the World War Second, the World War One, those are history. And story is something that maybe happened to me yesterday, but also History are real facts, something that really happened. And story, it's something that can be made up, okay? So for example, if I said, um, I'm gonna tell you a story of a princess who lived in a castle uh, that was guarded by a dragon and there were many people living in the town. So that's story because I'm making it up. But a history is if I tell you, you know, when Cristóbal Colón came to America, he was in three little ships. So it was La Niña, La Pinta, La Santa Maria, right? La Niña, La Pinta, La Santa Maria. So that's history. That's the difference. Okay. Very good. Now let's go here. Someone is sending messages. I'm going, I'm, I'm going home. I'm going to home yet. What? Okay, now uh, we stopped yesterday before we got to the reading. So we were in the reading exercise, but we stopped there because we had to go. So I didn't, I didn't have the time to read it for you. Now I'm going to read it for you and I want you to pay specific attention to my pronunciation and intonation when reading. 
Remember when you were in the school and you were reading like O E S Martes, like that. So I don't want you to read like that in English. That's when you're in basic, but you're at pre-advanced now. So pay attention to the intonation as well. Let me see if I can, yeah, perfect. Improve your memory, improve your life. Have you ever been embarrassed because you forgot something important? What kinds of things do you have the most trouble remembering? Mark began to introduce the guest speakers to the audience, but then paused in horror. He had forgotten her name. Barbara did her dearly when she went on vacation. When she came back, she couldn't remember where she put it. Perhaps you have had experiences like this. Most people have, and what's worse, most people have resigned themselves to a life of forgetting. They are unaware of a simple but important fact. Memory can be developed. If you'll, if you'll just accept the fact, this book will show you how. First, relax. If you're over anxious about remembering something, you'll forget it. Relaxing will enhance your awareness and ability to concentrate. Take deep breaths and tell yourself that you have all the time in the world to remember. Second, avoid being negative. If you keep telling yourself that your memory is bad, your mind will come to believe it and you won't remember things. When you forget something, don't say, gee, I need to have my brain rewind, rewire, rewire, sorry. Gee, I need to have my brain rewired. Jokes like this are negative and will have a negative effect on you and your memory. Wait a second, guys. I'm also it. Okay. To improve your memory, you'll need to take an active, an active role, like your body. Your memory can be strange without exercise. Look for opportunities to exercise your memory. For example, if you're learning a language, try to actively remember irregular verbs. You may also want to make associations or links between what you're trying to remember and things you already know. For example, if you need to catch a plane at 2 p.m., you can imagine a plane in your mind and notice that it has two wings. Two wings, 2 p.m. You are now the you are now ten times more likely to remember to take off time the take off time. So guys, it's yeah. These are just some skills to improve your memory. I think I I'm interested in this book right now <laughs> because sometimes I tend to forget things with the old job. Like I have a lot of jobs, as you know. So sometimes I'm thinking in one job and then thinking in another one and I have a really bad time like remembering things. So what I want you to do this moment is go, read, but read with intonation, okay? Read what, with intonation. It's different if I say first relax and if you are over anxious about remembering something, you'll forget it. Relaxing will enhance your awareness and ability to concentrate. Take deep breaths and tell yourself that you have all the time in the world to remember. Yeah, we know that you can read in English and we know that you can read fast, but it's not about that, okay? It's not about reading fast. It's about reading with intonation. Different if I said first, Relax. If you're over anxious about remembering something, you'll forget it. Relaxing will enhance your awareness and ability to concentrate. Take deep breaths and tell yourself that you have all the time in the world to remember. You see it's different? Yeah. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to try to read with intonation, put your feelings into the reading. And then when you finish this, just take turns uh, saying some paragraphs and when you finish please i want you to talk about experiences that you have had forgetting something 
And maybe if you know, we never know, if you know, share a tip, something that you do to remember things. For example, that like relating to wings with the two, um, the time that the person is going to live, the, the, the plane is going to live, okay? Do you get the activity? Yeah, perfect. Read with intonation, not just read to read, intonation, that's the key. Let's see. Mm. That's better. Okay, let's go. Good evening. Glenda, you're late again. Sorry, miss. Why is that? <laughs> you weren't home? Oh, you were the one who sent the message to the WhatsApp group? Sorry, it's raining. I couldn't hear well. I'm, I'm asking if you send the message to the WhatsApp group. No, you didn't? I'm going to check. No, 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 it's okay. No, um, I'm gonna send you to a breakout room. Your classmates right now are working on a reading activity with intonation. So maybe if you can find some, do you have some headphones or earphones? Okay, miss. Do, do you have like headphones? No? Ah, I'm going to look for, I have a, I'm here. So it's, it's going to be better with the rain. Ah, yes, that's right. Thank you. Okay.
paper where sheet is called no cool. Okay, Gab, uh, okay, thank you. Okay. Gabby, 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 Gabby. All people speak, please. Recording in progress. <laughs> Gabby, paragraph number five. Uh, Mark began to introduce the guest speaker to the audience, but then Paul said in horror, he had forgotten her name. Have you ever been embarrassed because you forgot something important? What kind of thing do you have the most trouble remembering? Improve your memory, improve your life. Next. Ahora sí en el orden correcto. Okay. Uh, Mark. B no, no, uh, the first is your hand. Now, okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, number one paragraph, no. Okay. Just, uh, okay. I can see, be breast and tell yourself that you have all, no, all, the, the, all the time in the world to remember. The, Second, uh, yeah. avoid, uh, but I, uh, hmm? Yeah, continue. I'm not able to see uh, other parts of this paragraph, just what I am reading right yeah, in the middle. I'm going to move because... to then. Yeah, don't worry, I'm uh, going to move this. So I can see. Yes. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, read first the paragraph three, and then I'm going to move to the other one. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, number three, second, avoid being negative. If you keep telling yourself that your memory is bad, your mind. So I'm, I can't remember what I have to do, mm -hmm. but you use my cell phone. Uh, cell phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, you put alarms when you have to, to make something, okay? Yeah. Okay, good. How about you, Manuel? What do you do when you forget something or for can't forget anything? Oh yes, oh yes. I forget uh, what is the. Okay. Oh, I didn't understand, Manuel. Hello, hello. Yeah, yes, was, I, uh, but I don't remember one situation that I forgot something. Maybe okay. in the school, I always uh, forgot the homework. <laughs> the homework or the, the answers in the exam. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. I forget things any time, every time. I, I, I forget them.
Welcome back again. One thing that I noticed was I heard that you still have problems with some pronunciations. For example, we were there and we you were reading something. So it says, Mark began to introduce the speaker to the audience, but then Paul said, you said in one break a room, Paul said, but then Paul said in horror, in horror. That's what you said. And I heard that it's here. Paul said, this is not Paul said. Remember that the verbs in the past have two, well, three pronunciations. If they end with T or D, then you're gonna pronounce like the ED. But if they end like in S, it's gonna be paused, paused. No, paused, it's paused, paused. But then paused in horror. He had forgotten her name. And I heard some problems with the pronunciations. That's what I was thinking. Hey guys, do you know how to pronounce the verbs or how to say the verbs in the past? The regular verbs in the past? I don't remember if I gave you uh, an advice on how to recognize if you're gonna use the T or the D sound. I think I did it last module. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I told you. So voiceless, I told you here, your fingers here, voiceless and voiced sound. So if it is voiced, it's gonna be a vibration in the last letter. For example, travel, the letter travel, travel. So the pronunciation is gonna be with the letter D, traveled, traveled, the past, traveled. Now with the verb work, if you do the pronunciation of the letter K, it's k, k, work, work. The pronunciation in the past is with, is with the letter t, t, with the sound. So it's gonna be worked, worked. The past of work is worked, worked, okay? So please try to remember those things because they are really important and you are about to be advanced. So you need to be paying attention to this, those little things because those topics, we explain those topics, maybe basic, basic one, okay? So try to, try to pay attention there. Okay, do you have any advice to not forget something? Nope, you don't have advices. You're always forgetting things. <laughs> I had an aunt, an aunt, you know what is an aunt? Aunt? No, aunt. So the, the wife of my uncle, uncle, aunt, aunt and uncle. Okay. So my aunt said that she had a ring. So she had a ring in her hand, a ring that had like a little bit, of, a little stone, a little stone. So every time she had to remember something really important, she will put the ring to the other side, or maybe she will change the ring of hen. Then when she sees the ring and it's like, hey, why do I have the ring in this hand? She will be like, oh yeah, I have to remember something. And she would do it. But that was long, long time ago when like people didn't have alarms in the phones. Something I do to remember things is I put alarms on my phone <laughs> and I put the little messages, right? And sometimes I'm driving or I'm doing something and I get the alarm and I see the message. And I always say, gracias Diana del pasado, because I know that it was me who sent a reminder to me in the future. <laughs> so that's something I do. What about you guys? Do you have any advices? No advices. No? Maybe teacher. Um, they do the same is. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm sorry. You're on mute. Yeah, Glenda. Glenda, you're on mute. 
I use the phone too because it's infallible. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. you have to save energy on your battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you do with your phone. Okay. Perfect. I, I I use an agenda in order to write all that all the tasks for one day, day by day. Yeah, yeah, an agenda is a really good idea. Actually, I'm looking for an agenda. Yes, that's a good advice, Julio. I'm sorry, Adriana, you were going to speak. Tell me. Uh, don't worry, teacher. No, uh, what I always do is trying to remember where I went or what did I do and so that I can remember, ah, I said I did this, so... I have to remember something. That's something I did. Yeah, some people say that you have to do like a mental or yeah, mental map. So you go back in your brain. Yeah. So where I was when I did this thing. Yeah, yeah, that's something really good. Okay, perfect, guys. Now we're gonna go with the next activity because we're gonna we're going to start we're going to start section five, actually the last section. Oh, I, but I, by the way, I have a question. Who finished the platform? Give me um, sign. Um, whatever so marcos finished the platform julio finished the platform okay hey, marielos boris perfect adriana oh, only them the other ones haven't finished the platform oh me too says ernesto Piñate. okay miguel, creo que también. miguel did yeah but yeah miguel is there so but miguel i don't know Miguel is always with the camera on and today she's not. Okay, anyway, um, remember you have to finish the platform on Monday. Monday, you have to finish the platform. That's the last day you have to finish the platform, okay? And again, guys, thank you to the people that have the cameras on. I have some people with the cameras off, some people that I have never met. So maybe one day I will have the pleasure to meet you <laughs> because sometimes I, I, I don't see you. So yeah, that will be good. Okay, let's watch the video, uh, the intro video for section five. To finish this course, we want you to sit, relax and watch the last video with us. Feel free to take notes as you watch it. Finally from us, the virtual office. For better or worse, technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Flavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things um, that it doesn't matter where you are. Like 42% of IBM's 350,000 employees, Bob Flavin rarely comes into an IBM office. We don't care where and how you get your work done. We care that you get your work done. On the day we met him, he was collaborating with computer scientists in British Columbia and Beijing from the on-call room of his local ambulance corps, where he works as a volunteer. You are in 6031. The workforce at the Accenture management consulting firm is so mobile, not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. No. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's fluffy and nice. Is, uh, that is, is a vision of the past. Come on into the theater. In the future, more companies with scattered workforces and clients may do what the crayon marketing firm has done and make their headquarters in cyberspace. Here's our little rooftop. We had our holiday party here. Crayon's workers rarely meet in the physical world. I am uh, in Boston today. And I am on Long Island today. But their alter egos in the virtual world gather once a week. We're here in, uh, in our boardroom and uh, you're here actually at the tail end of a status meeting. I never met Crayon's CEO in person. There you are. But we spent a couple of hours together in cyberspace. 
Our belief is that if we bring like minds together, no matter where they are in the world, we can actually create that connectedness as if we're actually here at the same place at the same time. If what matters is what you do, not where you are, who needs an office? Betsy Stark, ABC News, Crayonville, in cyberspace. Did you get all that in the video or you didn't? Huh? Yes, you got it? Yeah, people in the future are not going to be present in a no if you, office. They can do it by virtual. If you saw in the video, they were talking about the crayon company and like having meetings online and having alter egos. You know what is an alter ego? Un alter ego, like another personality you have. So they have all alter egos in the platforms. So I don't know if you have heard about Meta. Meta is Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. Okay, but do you know about the virtual space of Meta that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is designing? So you're gonna have like a alter ego and you're gonna go to places, you're gonna go to meetings, you're gonna go to everywhere with that alter ego. And the, actually you're gonna use the BRs. So you're gonna be like, you're in that place and moving like you're in that place. I think that's the future. And I don't know why, but I think that is better to work from home. I don't know what you think guys. It's, it's like what they said, it doesn't matter where you are. It matters that you get your work done. In my case, for example, here right now in the class, I can be teaching this class here in my house. I can be teaching this class in the beach. I can be teaching this class in a hotel room. I can be teaching this class anywhere when I have access to internet, right? But my classes that I teach in the morning, they make me do make they make me go to the place because the kids they don't have access to internet connection. But if they would have access to internet connection, it will be better. I think it's better to be at home and not right now, not spending money on gas because that's too expensive. I don't know what you think, but that's too expensive. Okay, so did you understand everything on the video? Oh, you want to watch it one more time? Yeah? One more time. Please. To finish this course, we want you to sit, relax, and feel free to take notes as you Finally from us, the virtual office. For better or worse, technology and globalization are creating startling changes in what it means to be on the job. Betsy Stark is tracking the new order of business, and tonight begins our series, The Future of Work. Imagine a work world with no commute, no corporate headquarters, maybe no office in the physical world at all. For Bob Flavin, Janet Hoffman, and Joseph Jaffe, the future is already here. These days we do so much stuff by teleconferences and things. Um, that it doesn't matter where you are. Like 42% of IBM's 350,000 employees, Bob Flavin rarely comes into an IBM office. We don't care where and how you get your work done. We care that you get your work done. On the day we met him, he was collaborating with computer scientists in British Columbia and Beijing from the on-call room of his local ambulance corps, where he works as a volunteer. You are in 6031. The workforce at the Accenture management consulting firm is so mobile, not even the CEO has an office with his name on the door. There's no corporate headquarters. No. If you need a workspace, you reserve it like a hotel room, checking in and out at a kiosk. Having a big desk is a sign of status with lots of family photos and, uh, you know, and, and carpeting that's fluffy and nice, is, uh, that is, is a vision of the past. Come on into the theater. In the future, more companies with scattered workforces and clients may do what the crayon marketing firm has done and make their headquarters in cyberspace. Here's our little rooftop. We had our holiday party here. 
Crayon's workers rarely meet in the physical world. I am uh, in Boston today. And I am on Long Island today. But their alter egos in the virtual world gather once a week. We're here in, uh, in our boardroom. And uh, you're here actually at the tail end of a status meeting. I never met Crayon's CEO in person. There you are. But we spent a couple of hours together in cyberspace. Our belief is that if we bring like minds together, no matter where they are in the world, we can actually create that connectedness as if we're actually here at the same place at the same time. If what matters is what you do, not where you are, who needs an office? Betsy Stark, ABC News, Crayonville, in cyberspace. And tomorrow, imagine having summers off every summer. Perfect. Now, the real deal. Do you prefer to go to your workplace or would you prefer or would you rather, remember, prefer, would you prefer to go to your workplace or would you rather stay and work home, work from home? <laughs> For a moment, I prefer home office, but uh, with the time, I, I love the interest in in the in this or because I only see only saw the and it's, it's very uh, interesting. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Who else? Teacher, um, uh, an alter ego will be ready in five years because today the meetings uh, are not in longer face to face. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is through uh, Zoom and the reports are uh, updated daily from the computer. Mm -hmm. In my work is uh, meeting is in Zoom is uh, because it's uh, COVID because it's my most easy uh, uh, an alter ego is uh, the complement the change of technology in, okay. the, in the work. Yes, an alter ego, alter ego, alter ego. Okay. Alter, alter, Okay. okay, alter ego. Yes, an alter ego, I think, is just like a way to, so you can feel like you're in, in that place, right? Because right now, you, we know we don't, we're on a video call. Okay, uh, someone else? Nope. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I prefer the home office because uh, we don't, uh, uh, we, we, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, we don't spend uh, time in the traffic and don't waste uh, uh, money in gas or and um, is is uh, for the for the environment is I, I think that is better. Yeah. Uh, work at home. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. What Mariela said is true, guys. For the environment, it's better if we stay at home because we don't go contaminated everywhere. That's true. That's very true. What she said, Marcos. I prefer work at, at home because I have more time with my family and with the animals. Uh, the time the time is is more important for my family because on in my family only two people, my sister, my mom. <laughs> yeah. And also, guys, I think. I don't know what do you think because I know so many people from the past and so many people that are I don't know have been working for a long time uh, people think that you have to give your life to your job and basically you have to live in your job when your real life it's outside of your job 
and your job is just a way to make a living, to make the money to live your life. But people get confused and they live to work and they don't work to live. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So you have to work to live, but you don't have to live to work, right? So something that I, I, I always think, and when I am going to my work, in, to my job in the morning, I'm like, take, it takes me like 40 minutes to get there and 40 minutes to come back. And then I spend all that time in the traffic and I, 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 I think it's, it's so like, I don't know, I don't like it, but there's a good thing about going to the place, internet connection. So sometimes internet connection is not good. For example, if I don't have internet connection today, or if it is raining really bad, I wouldn't be able to teach you this class. On the other hand, going to the place, I don't have to worry about internet connection, right? Because I'm there and I don't, I don't lose any classes. So I think there's pros and cons in every single case, right? It's, it's, it's something that, I don't know, has, uh, but I prefer to stay at home because here I have my office, everything, my family. If I want to say something, I just mute and say something to my family. It's different being in the job, in the workplace. Anyhow, we're going to um, watch the last video that I have for you for today. And then we are living in a moment. Join us in the last section of this course. We want you to answer the following questions. Number one, do you know when World War I began? How long has the United Nations been in existence? How long were the Beatles together for? If you really know the answers, type them in. I'm good at history. Part A, listen and practice. Look, here's a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. We want you to stay. Okay, so he was ask she was asking these questions to this man, and this man didn't know the answers. So what about you guys? Do you know the answers to these questions? I, I, I don't know. World War One, I, I think it began, yeah, 19, I don't know when it began. Do you know when it began or how long has the United Nations been in existence? And how long were the Beatles together for? Do you know any of these answers, guys? So oh, sorry about that. Do you know any of these answers or not? No, me, I don't have no idea. <laughs> Anyone else? The World War, uh, the first World War started in 1994. And 1994, when I was yeah. born. Sorry, 19... sorry, 1914, 1914. 1914. And, and, and in 1918, I think. 18, yes, I'm looking that on, on Wikipedia right now. Yeah, on Wikipedia says that. Wikipedia says that it began on July 1914 and ended on November 1918. Yes. But 19, when you say 1940, 40, 1940, uh, I mean, 1994, 94. I was like, what? When I, when I was born, I don't think that happened when I was born. <laughs> okay, try to answer these questions. I, I mean, inter internet, it's going to be your key. 
Wikipedia uh, at most is going to be helpful to answer these questions. But we're going to answer and we're going to share our answers on these questions tomorrow. And we're going to practice that conversation as well because it's time to leave already. And I didn't notice. <laughs> so I will see you guys tomorrow and then on Monday. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Have a great night, guys. Bye. 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 Good night.